Chapter 3. Pure Intentions Distorted. Feminist groups explicitly organize local action, including education and legislation, that promotes equality or equal opportunity for women. Gender equality is an essential human right for womankind to develop and live with dignity, freedom, justice, and peace. Which declares that all women deserve to be treated fairly. In the last two decades, better access to education, politics, and technology has helped some women join traditionally male-dominated spaces. Society has become somewhat fairer, but there is more action that can take place. Women are still facing discrimination, and it is possible to achieve gender equality without abandoning all traditional roles. With a patriarchal system, the youth are questioning the traditional gender roles since there have been changes in partnership perspectives. Since women's rights, feminist groups and discrimination in the workplace have helped women keep jobs and increase pay. Women ought to use caution when looking for the eternal mate. Because you can't tell whether you're dating a man who doesn't support women having rights. Although God created man first in his image, he made man a representative of the entire human race. But sexism limits the development of specific human rights, the formation of sexism holds some men back and discriminates and oppresses women. The traditional models are upheld by coercion with attitudes, myths, and ethical values that hinder equal partnership with scrutinized backlashes. These men often become uncomfortable trying to upkeep all masculine roles expectations, and they aren't experiencing certain forms of gender equality that women are experiencing either. Future actions would involve men sharing gender equality, to bring women into equal partnership with men, which supports legal and social change. Of which would enable, men, getting connected with their human essence. Whereas they can claim true freedom of expression, which involves new social activities, judgment, and realization. Relationships built on lust, envy, and strife. To envy is to feel discontent with someone's advantage, success, possessions, etc. To lust is to have an intense sexual desire for an image or person that can become uncontrollable, and it can be the object of such feelings. Relationships don't form open conversation about the direction it is headed, or confirmed mutual agreements usually are built on lust, envy, and strife. It doesn't form a healthy environment for children, and this is where you will find most children suffering through calamity. Including step-parenting relationships where one biological parent isn't present. In which, a parent may set one child on a different platform than the others. When the child is set on a different platform, and is used for uncontrollable sexual desires. It makes the other children feel less confident and connected to succeed in life. We don't have to pretend this doesn't happen, it happens all too often, but it is something that can be overcome with open conversation. There are good parenting books out there, and no parenting book will ever tell you to form lust, envy, or strife in a marriage or relationship to use children for sexual desires. No not one. If you have felt uncontrollable sexual desires or discontent with another person's advantages, success, possessions, etc., seek help from a church congregation. However, they will want to see a change in your behavior, so wholeheartedly strive to change. If you are someone feeling these sexual desires don't put the children in isolation, because it isn't healthy for anyone. Acts Against Women Nowadays many authors write about abusing young women in crime fiction thriller novels. The various list ranges from being beaten, blinded, boiled, bound, buried alive, burned, eaten, gagged, imprisoned, raped, sliced, stabbed, starved, strung up to tied down, or even suffocated. Other acts against women include, being drowned, forced into prostitution, pushed off a cliff, slipped a sex drug cocktail, or even used for one sex slave. Only in a few cases remaining quiet and submissive diminishes control, and oppression syndrome affects women more than men. Women are noticing their ideas or memories of traditional roles have been distorted with reoccurring forms of manipulation. The Bible and history are a comparison to the hardship women will face, if they don't remain quiet and submissive. The forceful show often comes directly and indirectly for women, and the occurrences never change due to the traditional gender roles. As a result, more are becoming less connected to righteousness and connected to self-righteousness. Too many people justify their wrong actions before the world, while violence against women and crime fiction thriller novels steadily increases. Did Jesus want women to have a voice? He wanted the innocent to receive justice, but this has very little to do with speaking out. While aggressive women are using the quote do as I say not as I do, a submissive woman continues going through the oppression phases until things change for the better. Physical abuse in the presence of kids. Nowadays women have rights, but arguments are formed during uncertainty or a woman going against a man's beliefs. In which, physical abuse in the presence of kids or assaults against kids happens. Originally, it was believed that domestic violence only occurred with the poor and uneducated. But most relationships formed with violence aren't making it to the marriage stages, and wealth isn't necessarily the common denominator. In some cases, a woman has had one man, in other cases, a woman has had multiple men or marriages. In some of those situations, when a woman was physically abused, the man has said, we don't call the police, 
we will handle it ourselves. This shows cowardice when a man cannot use words of wisdom to resolve conflict. It isn't fair to the woman or kids if any are present visualizing the assault. Whether a boyfriend or husband, the violence often involved men who had mood swings, and some even threatened to kill the woman. There were times a woman left their abuser, and then the men retaliated by killing them, and other women didn't leave for fear of the kids going without a father. Although some women don't value being defined by a man, if she has kids, they will want their father in their life. Victims in those situations became oppressed after the men maintained narcissistic control over them. After they left, the oppression formed into mental disorders. All this shows domestic violence has weakened support for an eternal marriage. Men with mood swings continue to impose violence against vulnerable women. There are vital steps men can take at every stage in life to prevent mood swings. Some steps include understanding what malnutrition is and isn't, making smart food choices, trying an oral supplement such as vitamin D3, brushing your teeth often, and consulting your health care provider. Also, soothing music can prevent oppression phases for women in these situations. Having said, many women may force men into relationships, but if more men used words of wisdom, fewer women would force relationships or end them. Set aside selfish pride when co-parenting, even if it weren't an abusive relationship. Keep in mind, the most important things in life involve embodying a loving and kind spirit with courage. A parent's first bond with their child. Creation between a father and mother is the first intimate part of forming a fetus. When the mother carries the fetus to term, this is the second intimate part of the formation and the first intimate part of bonding with the unborn fetus. The birth of an infant is the second intimate part of bonding after the mother carries the infant to term. Once the father and mother visualize their newborn baby, they give him or her a unique name, and then they fall in love with the baby. Breastfeeding is the third intimate part of bonding, an eternal bond both the baby and mother already share. Since those intimate parts help determine a father's guidance, the father ought to be present during formation, bonding, and if possible other stages. A father and mother generally desire a foundation where their children won't become a heavy burden. But, if a child and parent's purest intent gets distorted, it breaks the bond the parents and child had. More than anything in this world, they ought to desire to maintain that foundation. This requires fighting for their child when temptation comes their way, and if they weren't raised to, they need to be trained to do so. Otherwise, things can go downhill rather quickly. In a world where we have become unacceptable of eternal bonds between child and parents during pregnancy stages, it leaves less room for parents to honor lasting bonds. While it doesn't require money for parents to bond with their kids. Society has created a social view that says, if you can't afford to have a child, you aren't the parent or you are not a good parent. This myth distorts father's and mother's purest intent to create bonds that can last. This perspective needs a change to the old social views. Overcoming involves the world becoming acceptable once again of a poor parent's bond with their child. New Slave Woman vs. Bond Woman A bond woman is being created by mothers who limit drugs and violence from influencing their daughter's life. A slave woman is being created by mothers who beat and verbally curse their daughters around drugs and violence as if anything righteous will come out of living to die for these items while it teaches them to accept drugs, violence, and other forms of enslavement. This occurs in homes where fathers and mothers are present, and more commonly in homes where mothers are present and fathers are not. Just another reason more fathers ought to be present during their child's upbringing. A slave gal is being taught she doesn't need to overcome trauma as a child, while the bond gal is being taught to overcome to reign victoriously. Broken spirits. Having kids and teens with a broken spirit means, they have non-supportive parents and there are several reasons why they have a broken spirit. One parent may have an addiction, a severe mental illness, and slash or a child molester may reside in the home or visits the home. In which, kids and teens are often forced out for lack of finances and slash or physical, sexual, and verbal abuse. Teens are also forced out for breaking curfew, and usage of alcohol or illicit drugs. Too many parents choose sinful sacrifices, and when the addictions are part of a tradition, they can be unbearable to live by. Relationship building starts at home with the adults around them, but once an adult has broken the trust, it can be difficult for the kids and teens to get back on track. Generally, after teens are forced out of the home, if it wasn't for church or college, they tend to lose hope. As a result, the sense of an emotional connection becomes non-existent because it requires practical formation. Some youth may avoid connecting with other family and friends, for fear of their trust being betrayed again. Not being able to connect in relationships, decreases the probability of them being joined together as one with a spouse. While they won't be ready to emotionally connect, they may not even be ready for the world. A person's body, mood, and thoughts affect their willpower, and the motivation to achieve slowly diminishes after being traumatized. What they do with willpower thereafter can bring about more negative results. Forcing them out will only deter their personal beliefs, goals, self-value, and self-worth to a point of being influenced by anyone. The youth spirits ordinarily get broken when they value willpower to overcome trial tests. 
The Bible teaches us to overcome the trial test, but it doesn't have references for forcing the youth out of the home. In Proverbs 22:66 it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Calamity and famine in sinful sacrifices. Defiling flesh drinking alcohol daily, dating random sexual partners, selling and smoking drugs, and the use of prescription drugs is at an all-time high. Random acts of violence go on daily and many families have to move from place to place. Most of the lands in the U.S. are in a desolate state, which adds to the calamity and famine for the youth. In which they become victims of abandonment, abortion, born out of wedlock, taken away from birth fathers and slash or mothers, and often are kidnapped, molested, murdered, neglected, and even tortured. Other youths become victims of homelessness, severe malnutrition, or starvation when they are all God's creations. Time after time kids and teens visualize the promiscuous and selfish people in the world, sinful sacrifices consume their life, and then they drop out of high school. Many of them make depressive images in the mind because society generally feels justified in doing things crooked and perverted, so they become delusional about learning. In cases where the kids and teens suffer from one or two mental disorders, they have cursed or physically fought their parents. Typically, their dignity, responsibilities, and rights were denied for the sinful sacrifices. But naturally, the youth knew living a better quality of life could have helped them get on track for setting goals and reaching achievements. Yet many of them couldn't get their feet on solid ground to claim their mental clarity of innocence. Marriage is something to look forward to, it isn't something to hinder respect. For these and many other reasons, having kids by multiple guys has led to disrespect for a father, and beating them with objects and cursing them has instilled hatred. As a result, they don't acknowledge becoming a living sacrifice as the first fruit for others who are lost in sin. They perceive acquiring blessings, gifts, honors, and rewards as requiring no living sacrifices. These are the majority reasons why the youth have a broken spirit and no respect for people of authority. Not enough parents are admitting the evil acts that took place against their youth during their upbringing, they rather send them away to a mental facility to avoid admitting fault, but mental people don't get this way by themselves. Parents are hindering the youth, overlooking the negative situations, and the benefits of eternal life. Most parents look at their kids as though it is their fault, and the real stories need to be reproved. This only motivates the youth to make deals with the enemy, and be lured by more sinful sacrifices, which are forms of enslavement. When they ought to be embodying an angelic personification, to receive blessings, honors, and rewards as a gift from God. Having said that, excessive acts and selfishness make families weak when our country should be making families stronger. Parents ought to be encouraging them to do homework to excel in school which will allow them to grow in life. They ought to put faith in their youth when delivering righteous guidance while earning respect. The entire family could claim their direction, identity, and victory a lot faster. Isolating kids. Behavioral isolation refers to the many species that perform mating rituals differently. Such as crickets only mate with males that produce a particular mating song. This is a common barrier between animals because these clues are ignored by species not accustomed to the ritual. The same concept applies to humans, Christians only mate with other Christians. This is a major reason newcomers feel out of place in churches. While some parents isolate their kids for disciplinary actions, others isolate them to keep them from hanging with the wrong crowd or to keep them from having friends period. However, not every parent isolate, and parents isolate for different reasons. Isolation is often used to segregate a group of people, and for some, it has been difficult to overcome. When you have been shut away from family and friends, you may experience feelings of anxiousness, depression, loneliness, withdrawals, etc. And your emotional connections may be replaced with fears. The youth have to build long-term emotional bonds. They need to be allowed to communicate and listen, to overcome. They have to be able to overcome the things that hold them back and avoid letting setbacks hinder their prayers or success. Also, they need to be allowed to put faith in God, because He has shared their struggles. So, if you aren't living a righteous lifestyle, you ought not to isolate kids because you will only hinder their growth. A child's devotion to their mother. Most children love their mother with a whole heart, regardless of forthcoming facts, and literally, she can do no wrong in their eyes. But once the children grow up and see the negative things their mother has done, it leaves them broken-hearted. They tend to wonder, why my mother isn't a forgiving and loving person? Why my mother hasn't made time for me? Why my mother cheated outside the marriage? Too often, they wonder has my mother ever been a righteous gal? Also, they tend to wonder will she always be around? They are often broken-hearted with many questions that get answered promptly, but sometimes not at all. Life relates to the wind when the focus is away from God's word, whichever way the wind blows you tend to follow. After squandering opportunities, you create warfare between God and self. Although womankind is to look out for the structure of the home, as God intended. Just as kids start to lose faith in their mothers, gals tend to lose respect for the father in heaven for similar reasons. Once you lose faith in the father you won't acknowledge becoming transformed, 
as a part of his ministry. Devotion to either requires discipline and willpower to not conform to the things of this world. Mothers are to raise their kids in the direction they are to go, guiding, and nurturing them. The kids ought to learn biblical values from mothers who know best what true values mean. Mothers aren't supposed to provoke them to enemy warfare or wrath. Kids exercising with mothers. God didn't intend mothers overlooking their kids' health activities for the vainness. Kids are whom mothers ought to be more concerned about, which is a step-by-step -step process. There are honorable characters kids can display without being vain. Nevertheless, a burden for some is losing weight that isn't getting enough exercise. Exercising together will enable them to stop consuming laziness as a destiny, and it will increase God's guidance in their life. In Matthew 18 19 Jesus said, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. After kids start to respect their birth mothers, God will relieve their heavy burdens and give them rest. Leaving the kids an inheritance. Compared to the beginning of time, human life has revolutionized, yet still fewer actions and thoughts go into a child's future. The youth are seeking the opportunity for future education and marriage vows, or an inheritance or will, and not enough is being done about it. Some youth are being cut out of the will altogether. It doesn't make sense a gal works an entire lifetime, and spend the extra finances on non-eternal things, and then isn't held accountable for leaving her kids an inheritance. This is another reason why kids have broken spirits. Too many parents are willing to force the sword on kids suffering through hardship, and it is all about the here and now. The government shouldn't have to step in on every aspect of a child's life. More adults ought to be willing to sacrifice the non-eternal things, to build an inheritance for their kids' future. But this seems to be an unfavorable topic to discuss while more youth suffer. The ones who suffer as kids are the same ones who suffer as adults, and it is rare for this not to happen. This is to form a dialogue for gals with kids to consider further options.